What's up everyone? I'm back again to do the answers part of my Q&A. So many of you commented leaving questions on my Q&A announcement video, so let's just get started because I have a lot to go through. First, I'm going to answer some general questions that you guys asked about me, and then we're going to get into the questions that you guys submitted. Hi. My name's Anna. I live in America and I'm from the Philippines. Most of you asked similar questions, so I kind of grouped them together to give a general answer. So let's get into it. The most commonly asked question that I got was, when did you start doing magic? Fast forward to 2011 and I found a deck of cards in my aunt's room and asked her if I could have it. And as soon as I had the cards, I kind of connected them to magic and searched up how to do card tricks. From there, I got to find a bunch of magic videos like Miss Mags. And in the related search bar, I found other tutorials and got into magic again. And then in 2012, I seriously got into magic. I started buying decks of cards, looking up new tutorials to learn for tricks and watching other magic YouTubers. And now I'm here two and a half years later, still doing it. <laughs> Cardistry or magic? I originally started off with magic and I do think of myself as more of a magician-y person than I am a cardist because I don't really know a lot of flourishes and I'm still learning and I'm trying to get more into cardistry, but as of now, I think magic. Who inspired you to do magic or cardistry? For magic, the person who has inspired me is probably Jarek120 of How To Disturb Reality. He is a huge inspiration because of how successful he became through his YouTube channel and it inspires me to keep up this YouTube thing and hopefully I could make a living off it or just at least keep doing it because of you guys, because you guys honestly keep me wanting to do this. For Cardistry, I have to say Alex B is a huge inspiration because she is another female cardist and there's not many of us out there and she's extremely talented and has so many original moves that inspires me to become a better flourisher and kind of keep up with her because I am nowhere near her level. So Alex B for sure inspires me to become a better Artist. What are some other hobbies you like to do besides magic? Another hobby that I like to do besides magic is this pretty much filmmaking and editing and photography and also graphic design. Those are the main things that I like to do other than magic and it's great that I get to do all those things together and make them all for YouTube. Got any social media we can follow you on? I'm really happy this question was asked so I can address it. If you guys have noticed, I don't really post any social media links for you guys to follow me on in the description or in the video if I plug it in. I don't really do that ever. And that is because my social media is not really magic related in any way. Most people in real life don't know that I do magic or YouTube and if you were to follow me on social media, you wouldn't really be getting any information for the channel or magic. So I never really saw the point in telling you guys to follow me on them because you guys wouldn't really get anything out of it. Some of you have actually found some of my accounts like Twitter and Instagram and that's okay. And as long as you don't spam me, I won't block you. And I think that's fair. Favorite deck? First thing you guys should know is that I am really bad at picking favorites. I never have one favorite thing because I can never choose and I'm really indecisive. So for the questions about favorites, I'm going to be answering a little bit more than just one thing. For one of my favorite custom decks, I think I'm gonna have to go with the Monarchs just because they handle really well and hold up really nice. And the box and back design are just amazing. The artwork on it is fantastic. Studs are great. Aladdins, they handle great. And of course, bicycle. Normal bicycles are great for magic and cardistry and really anything. Favorite magic trick? Favorite non-gimmick card tricks probably have to be double exposure, which is the one where they fan the cards and they're all mixed up, except they take a picture and the only card that is face down is their card and the rest of the cards are back to normal. That one's a really impressive one and it can be done with any deck of cards. I definitely recommend that one, by the way. That hand sandwich trick, which is the one where you get a card and then it's not their card, but then you like have it in their hand sandwich and then it does turn into their card. That one's pretty good. Also an ambitious card routine where the person's card just pops out of the deck. That one's also a really good one. Probably one of my favorite gimmick card tricks has to be Distortion by Wayne Houchin. 
French Kiss or Sealed with a Kiss is also one of my favorite gimmick card tricks. And lastly, the Invisible Deck has to definitely go down as one of my favorite gimmick card tricks. Favorite non-card trick probably has to be Profit, which looks like this, where you have five $1 bills, and then, watch closely, they turn into 20s. great and uh, I can turn them back but I won't another one is the ring trick and I'm not sure if that's the official name but the one where you take the ring off and then throw it back on I get amazing reactions to this and it's done with a normal ring and it's really easy to learn and lastly a fire trick that I like to do with matches kids don't try this at home do it at your friend's house I don't know <laughs> no I'm just kidding don't the breathing smoke match trick not really sure what the official name is though Hopefully you caught that because that's the last time I'm gonna try to do it. <coughs> I wouldn't suggest doing that trick too often because it is terrible for your health. Favorite magician? My favorite kind of big name magician is probably David Blaine because a lot of the tricks that he performs, he performs basic tricks with basic moves, but the way he talks and the way, the patter that goes with him and the way he performs is what makes him interesting to watch. And also Penn and Teller. I got the chance to actually watch them live and I was in the front row so I got to be part of a trick and I got a picture with Penn and Teller, got a signed card, everything and I just really like them as performers because of the way they carry themselves. They are very nice and you know I was able to get a picture with them and like it was for free. Other people, you'd probably have to pay for a backstage pass. And they were just really nice and they're great performers. That's why they've been doing it for so long. Favorite magic YouTuber. Oh, okay, so I'm really glad this question was asked because I have a very long list. First off, my favorite kind of magic teaching YouTubers has to be Miss Mag 822, Andy Field Magic, How to Disturb Reality, and 52 Cards. For cardistry and flourishing videos, I have to say Zach Mueller, Tobias Levin, Punchwater, Black Tiger 981, Nick Stumphauser, Alex B, and Burger Carlson. Those are probably my faves right now, so you should definitely check them out. And for people who are kind of more performers of magic, I have to say Justin Flom, Kayla Morelli, and Chris Mitchell. I'm sure there are so much more and I'm missing so many, but those are the ones that kind of came off the top of my head right now. Rarest deck. Rarest slash most expensive decks that I own are probably Fontaine's Gold Crown and my Jack decks. What editing software do you use? I edit with Adobe Premiere and After Effects, but most of my earlier videos were edited with iMovie. What are your thoughts on YouTube and the exposure of magic and how it's damaging the art of secrecy because of the new waves of young aspiring magicians think all magic is on YouTube and relate magic only to YouTube and hence books are dying out. On the point about books dying out, I don't think they could because a lot of good tricks have not yet been taught in videos and you can only find them in books and for that reason I think they won't be dying out anytime soon because a lot of people still want to learn those tricks. A good example is Quantum Kings by John Gustafaro which I haven't been able to find a tutorial in, in a video and for that reason I had to get the book. Will you do a Google Hangout with your fans. Uh, first of all, I hope you guys know that I don't consider you guys fans. That's so weird to think people are fans of me. I consider you guys more like friends and viewers. So yeah, that. I really do plan on doing a huge Google Hangout with a bunch of you guys and a bunch of cardists. So stay tuned for that, but I haven't announced one yet because I still need to plan it with a bunch of people. But yes, there will be one, eventually. Do you have any original effects that you will be putting up on The Wire? I do, but I don't want to say much about it yet because I don't want to mention what it is if it doesn't get accepted, but there will be maybe one eventually, possibly. Are you and Shauna like besties? Um, absolutely. Is that even a question? Um, <laughs> 
Can you speak Spanish? Si. Favorite magic trick DVD that you bought? I only have a few magic DVDs, but Profit definitely has to be one of my favorites. Have you come across a bully that has made fun of your magic? I luckily have not, and hopefully I never have to. How often do you do magic at school? I barely do cards ever at school simply because a lot of people don't know I do magic. And for that reason, I don't really do magic at school because I don't want to be known as that magic kid. But if there's like a deck of cards for some reason at school, I will bust out a trick. And I occasionally do magic with ordinary objects that are practical and a lot of tricks that are not cards because then it's something really amazing. I often do the ring trick because that one gets really great reactions and it's done with an object that's totally normal and practical in any situation. Do you plan on doing magic as a profession? No, honestly, I've never thought of magic to be a future career for myself because I never really thought of it more than just a little hobby that I like to do and for that reason, I never really thought of it as something I could do for the rest of my life or to make money from. So no, sorry, I don't. How often do you procrastinate school stuff because you decided to pick up a deck of cards? So much, it's not even funny. I just try to work, but then I have a deck of cards just laying around and I pick it up saying to myself, I'm just gonna do a quick fan or shuffle and then it turns up into being a little sesh. So yeah, I'm sorry, I'm guilty. Can you put it all? Can I put it all, please? Oh, two seconds. <laughs> No. So thank you to anyone who commented for the Q&A. I got to answer so many questions. And if I didn't get to answer your question, go back to the original announcement video and I might have commented and replied to your question. Don't worry, this isn't the last of my Q&As. I'll hopefully do another one in the future. So don't feel bad if you didn't get to ask a question for this one. I hope you guys liked the way I did this video and hopefully there will be more in the future. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. I missed the camera. Let's just throw away these $50 Fontaines. Oh, that one's all right. Missed the camera again.